Kaga Michio wakes up in an unfamiliar world and immediately decides to commence his isekai journey with some pleasure slaves. He purchases Roxanne, a beast woman with cute ears, thick tail, and some otherworldly curves. And as the title suggests, she gives my boy Michio a lot of pleasure. And I mean, a lot. This is Michio's journey where he conquers Dungeon in the day and then conquers Roxanne in the night. Kaga Michio wakes up to find himself in an unfamiliar place. Wondering how he got here, he remembers the game Ancient World that he was playing. Michio looks around and realizes that he is in a stable. As he gazes at the horse, a window pops up, identifying the animal as a horse. Michio, remembering this skill as identify, remembers himself selecting this skill before booting the game. Another window pops up, displaying current level 1 status. He continues to look at himself in the tracksuit which he is wearing only to marvel at the realistic simulation of this VR game. After examining himself and realizing that he is barefooted, Michio steals a pair of sandals from a corner of the stable. Then he uses Identify at everything around to look for the bonus equipment which he selected before starting the game. Michio finds Durandal, a legendary blade and ring of determination beneath the hay on which he woke up and equips them. Once that's taken care of, he walks out of the stable and into a peaceful village. But before his excitement could escalate, it appears that the village is under attack by bandits. Michio, with his eyes twitching, realizes that his first quest must be to defeat these bandits and save the villagers. Looking at the bandit leader, Michio again uses Identify to learn that the goon is level 41 and has an equipment named Thief's Bandana. Convincing himself that he can defeat the bandit leader, given this is the first quest, Michio sneaks up behind the goon and beheads him using Durandal. Whoa, the sword sure is OP. Getting sprayed by the bandit leader's blood, Michio comments that this game is pretty shitty and continues to kill the rest of the bandits. After that's taken care of and the village is saved, the village chief Somara comes up to Michio and expresses his gratitude. Somara continues to thank Michio by giving him the spoils from the battle. Looking at the bandana among the spoils, Michio learns that it is an ordinary one and the bandit leader's bandana is not here. He raises this point to the village chief and Somara assures them to investigate the matter and guides Michio to a room for rest. In his room, Michio decides to log out of the game but fails to do so even after trying everything at his disposal. That is when it hits him. He remembers that game warned him that he wouldn't be able to return once he started playing. It starts to sink in that this is not a game but his reality from now on. Michio's thoughts get interrupted as the village chief enters the room and gives him clothes to change into and water for cleaning purposes. After cleaning himself, he recollects his thoughts and resolves to live his life in this new world even if he must kill someone. Changing into the new clothes, Michio comes out of the room and finds that Samara has captured and brought the man who stole the real bandana. The village chief gives him the thief's bandana and after getting Michio's consent, marks the thief as a slave on the intelligence card after summoning it using an incantation. Seeing this, Michio inquires about the card from Samara and learns that it shows the status of a person. The chief also tells him that the money earned after selling the slave is going to be divided between the slave's family and him. Samara then hands Michio the intelligence cards of the bandits and says that he can collect their bounties from the night station in the town of Vale. The village chief even arranges for a carriage to escort him to the town. The next day, Michio reaches Vale with the help of the escort and first collects the bounties from the night station after getting his intelligence card verified. The escort then guides him towards the slave trader and introduces the various places like brothels which can be found in this town. Hearing that there are brothels here, Michio fantasizes about women in various erotic clothes. The boy's imagination is wild. His thoughts get interrupted though as the escort informs that they have reached the slave trader's mansion. Entering the mansion, they meet Alan, the slave trader. Alan tells them the market price of the slave which they want to sell and after getting their consent, purchases it. The escort leaves after Michio gives him the slave's family's portion of the money. Alan then invites Michio to another room and tells him that he should buy some slaves considering he appears to be an adventurer. The slave trader continues and says that he sells sex slaves as well and seeing that Michio is tempted introduces Roxanne, a beast woman who is currently in a maid outfit serving tea. Alan then puts the final nail in the coffin by telling Michio that humans and non-humans cannot reproduce and Roxanne is pure and her innocence is intact and she has agreed to do it with her master. Damn, I can see through the screen how our boy's hormones are raging. 
So hearing this, Michio directly asks about the price and realizes that the 422,800 NARS price tag is not something which he can currently afford. But the slave trader says he can wait for 5 days for Michio to gather the money. Thanking Alan for this courtesy, Michio leaves and resolves to gather the money to purchase Roxanne. After pooling all his money, Michio realizes that he now needs 70,000 NARS to purchase Roxanne. Recalling his conversation with Alan, he goes to the labyrinth in the western woods after purchasing some equipment and Schemitar with a skill slot because he used the reset character to hide Durandal, as it is too eye-catching. In the woods, he encounters an adventurer's party which popped out of a black gate. Seeing a mage in the party, Michio realizes that the black gate is teleportation magic. He then continues to secretly follow the party and reaches the entrance of the labyrinth, which is a giant tree. After seeing the party enter the labyrinth, Michio re-equips Durandal and follows suit. Inside the labyrinth's first floor, he realizes from a status window that he has gained the explorer job, which even has an item box and dungeon walk skill. After experimenting with the skills, Michio heads deeper into the labyrinth and encounters Needlewood, a level 1 monster, and easily kills it using Durandal. He then collects the branch, dropped by the monster, and continues to fight another monster by using the Overwhelm skill from the hero job, which he gained after saving the village. Killing the monster, Michio wonders what he is even doing this for. Suddenly, he jolts as he realizes that because he used the skill for an extended time, his MP reduced, which resulted in his pessimistic behavior just now. Michio decides not to use excessive spells and continues to kill monsters using Durandal. After some time, he comes back to the town and sells 21 branches and receives 273 nars. Receiving the money, Michio goes to the Vale restaurant to spend the night. Early next day, he enters the labyrinth directly from the town using teleport from the bonus incantation section of his character panel. After fighting some monsters on the first floor, he accidentally enters a secret room which is a monster den. Michio successfully kills his way out of the room after having several brushes with death and heads back to town. On his way to town, he sees a dead bandit and remembers the lucrativeness of bounties. Michio resolves to do bounty quests and earn more money and make Roxanne his. Three days before the deadline to purchase Roxanne, Michio explores the town in search of bandits but fails to find any. He doesn't lose hope and after disguising himself, again explores the town at night. During his search, Michio enters the red light district and just drools seeing the scenery. As he takes in the surrounding view, a man with a scarred face comes out of a shop. Michio looks at him and behold, the man's a bandit. He secretly follows the bandit to his hideout in the slums. Looking at all the bandits outside the hideout, Michio familiarizes himself with the movement patterns and habits and leaves for the night. The next day at night, Michio again in a disguise approaches a lone bandit in the slums and tries to lure the goon into bringing him inside the hideout by tempting him with the thief's bandana. The bandit gives in to his greed and brings Michio inside the house and tries to kill him. But anticipating this, Michio dodges the sneak attack and kills the bandit. He then cuts the goon's left hand and keeps it to extract the intelligence card. Michio then continues to kill the other bandits who are asleep and collects another three hands. Then he has to leave as the bandits outside notice the commotion. The next day, he visits the night station and cashes in the bounty. Realizing that he now has enough money, Michio swiftly visits Alan and successfully purchases Roxanne. <laughs> Looks like our boys is raring to go. Alan then settles the master-slave contract between the two and thanks him for his support. Amidst the slave trader's lip service, Michio, in his own thoughts, is gratified that Roxanne has finally become his. Michio changes his room for a longer one and takes Roxanne into it. Entering the room, he realizes that the innkeeper deliberately gave him a room with a double bed, whereas Roxanne is visibly nervous and after entering the room. Noticing that the wolf girl is afraid, Michio reassures her that in addition to sharing his bed, he mostly wants her to accompany him into the labyrinth as a fighter. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Settling all their stuff, the two head to the market to purchase equipment for Roxanne and her undergarments as well. After purchasing everything, including the underwear, the two return to their room. Following their return, both have dinner together and despite the initial awkwardness, manage to wash each other's backs using the water provided by the innkeeper. Michio also takes advantage of this moment to wash Roxanne's tail and massage her two mountain peaks. After this short, steamy session, both get into bed. Michio then pins Roxanne beneath him on the bed and passionately starts kissing her. The girl accepts her master's advances and reciprocates in kind. 
After thoroughly enjoying her lips and tongue, Michio gets some action done on Roxanne's perky mounts and makes the girl moan. Looks like he knows how to treat a lady. Following the foreplay, he unseals her garden and takes her to Pound Town for the whole night. The next morning, Roxanne kisses him because he asked her to before they fell asleep. After enjoying those subtle lips, Michio decides to begin their first trip into the labyrinth. Equipping his equipment, Michio asks Roxanne how can he add skills to them. She says that he needs to collect the rare monster skill crystal and have a blacksmith bonded to the equipment. Michio then asks how he can become a blacksmith. Roxanne tells him that only dwarves have the blacksmithing ability, and they are often not so trustworthy. Hearing this, Michio decides to find a trustworthy dwarf to add as a party member. Pretty sure the dwarf is going to be more than that. Shortly after, he makes a party with her using the system and brings Roxanne inside the labyrinth using his teleportation magic. Michio then starts fighting the monsters, which Roxanne located using her sense of smell. As they are killing monsters, the wolf girl tells her master that monsters are made of magic and magic crystals, which can be purchased or found in the labyrinth, and can be filled with monster magic and sold for incredible sums. Learning this, Michio brings Roxanne to purchase two empty crystals and, at the same time, learns that they can hold magic for one million monsters and change colors based on the number of monsters killed. He also learns that this is a time-consuming process, so most people sell them after killing 100,000 monsters. Following their purchase, both re-enter the labyrinth and easily kill the monsters, and Michio even gathers more magic in his magic crystal because of his bonus incantation. As he continues to kill the monsters, Roxanne also tells that labyrinths are alive and grow upwards, so monsters get stronger with each subsequent floor. After engaging in the constant killings, Michio realizes that his party needs healing skills and inquires Roxanne about it. She tells him that Monk is a job which has healing skills and its practitioners use bare fists to kill monsters. Subsequently, both Michio and Roxanne gain the job of Monk because of the party system after defeating a monster with their bare hands. Getting back to their room after a whole day of killing, they repeat their ritual of bathing each other and make love. Oh, Michio, you horndog. The next day, the two locate the room of the first floor boss monster and head inside to beat it. They easily kill the tree-type boss and Roxanne collects the medicinal leaf it dropped and gains the herbalist job which can help make medicine. After defeating the boss, the two can access floor 2, but Michio also wants to have the herbalist job, so they return to the first floor to fight the boss again. After acquiring the herbalist job by killing the boss and collecting the dropped leaf, Michio impresses Roxanne by making medicine using the job skill. Following this, both enter the second floor and familiarize themselves with the new level 2 caterpillar monsters. After some time, they return to the town and Michio notices a bandit watching Alan's trading house and decides to warn him. After hearing his warning, Alan says that this is probably related to the man he purchased from Michio. He continues to explain that he recently sold the thief to some dangerous looking men and suspects that the slave is a bandit and the men who bought him were members of his gang. Because the thief is still in the trading house, the slave trader expresses his suspicion that the slave has been told to wait to let his companions easily ambush the trade house at night. Hearing this, Roxanne gets worried as she has fond memories of Alan's other servants. Realizing that his companion is worried, Michio requests Alan to hire him as a bodyguard and the slave trader takes him up on this offer. Following this, the two return to the inn to sleep. In the middle of the night, Roxanne wakes Michio up by giving him a deep and passionate kiss. After sharing this intimate moment, the two join Alan and his combat slaves to ambush the bandits at the trade house. 